What's up everybody, I'm your Revit. We are here on Torque Drift today to do a little tutorial and to help out some people with tuning. A lot of people have been asking about cartoons. So we are going to take that E30 of mine and uh, basically do a breakdown on it, showing you everything about it. But before we do that, I feel we should probably get a run in it so you guys can kind of get an idea of if you guys have never seen my E30. Uh, it is now a pro, it, well, it is a pro level. 1209 horsepower on Nexon tires and uh, it's it's got a rotary in it all the Doritos little Dorito little Dorito action today so this car is uh, kind of set up very soft it kind of does some uh, three-wheel motion on it and uh, it's kind of a interesting car right there a little three-wheel motion riding that outer bank Little handbrake grab there, a little flick there, little, some, little sparks there. Ah, oh, just clicked the wall a little bit too hard. Well, so much for a really good baller run with uh, zero penalty score, but it's still a good run nonetheless. As you can see, this car got a little bit of a three-wheel motion going on, some little uh, flicky left and right, but it's uh, definitely a solid car. I do love my uh, E30. And uh, if you guys remember from the beta, I used to rock a rotary E30, and it was awesome. So I decided to bring the rotary E30 back. So we're going to do it again because we didn't really get a chance to chase. We are rocking just a generic little livery here for today on the E30. So let's uh, see who our next challenger is going to be. Do we uh, crack open a drink for ourselves? There we go. Nice cold uh, beverage. While we wait for our opponent to load. There it is. Ooh. Looks like we got a pretty interesting uh, S13 in the mix. So, this car likes fourth. And uh, what I like about it is when I first start off, it doesn't get squirrely on me right away. Like some of the other cars I have get squirrely right away off the start. This one kind of does not. And surprisingly, it can hold a lot of angle for not having a uh, custom angle kit. I believe it's only on a pro angle kit, but I am rocking the uh, suspension sponsorship which uh, gives me, uh, or angle quit sponsorship, which gives me a little bit more angle on my cars than the actual angle kit can give me. Ooh, right on that wall. Oh, what? Oh, I didn't want to tap that wall. I wanted to stay off the wall, but still a decent run nonetheless. So this is just a testament to show you what the E30 is kind of capable of. And uh, then we're going to get into the breakdown of it and kind of break it down for you guys, show you guys what I'm using for tuning and stuff like that. See if it gives you guys a little bit of a idea on how to help get your cars uh, handling how you want them. Now my style may be a little bit different than yours, but uh, the car tuning is uh, kind of very similar between this car and my other cars, but each car is slightly different based on weight and motor and stuff like that. I'm a little bit far behind this guy, but He's running kind of a wonky line, so we're trying to just uh, stay somewhat close and get our points and not wreck our car. Trying to not wreck our car there. So, I believe we're going to take that win. So, the E30, four rotor, well, rotary engine, I don't know, it's not a four rotor. But uh, we did take the win. So, let's go take a look and get down to the nitty gritty of the car and uh, see if I can give you guys a little bit of uh, some tips and tricks if I say so because my cars do handle pretty well um, but like I said the cars may not handle that well for you if your driving style is a little bit different than mine uh, my driving style is pretty uh, pretty quick and aggressive I guess you would say all right so E30 for for the most part we're running a 26B um, and we are running a pro clutch basically all pro parts Pro intercooler. Why are we not running this one? Oh, that one gives us less. So we're going to sell that. Sell that part. Probably got to get my money back up. And uh, pro exhaust. I could be selling all these parts and making a lot of money on these parts probably, but I will do that another time. We are rocking a uh, pro turbocharger and for, we are running full 18 pounds of boost. So um, 
We're running a lot of boost on this car. I didn't show you any of the other. Uh, we should look at the clutch. So for the clutch, we're running a 0.3 shift speed and a uh, negative 0.28 uh, clutch kick. I don't really use clutch kicks too much. Um, I usually use handbrake, which if you notice, if I'm on the gas and I hit the handbrake at the same time, it kind of acts as a clutch kick in itself. So that's why I do it that way. Um, like I said, my driving style might be slightly different. So uh, for ECU, we're rocking, you know, higher RPM, high idle, and high rev limiters. Uh, that's probably a good thing to do because you spend a lot of times on the high revs, um, especially in this game. Uh, you need to stay in the high revs, otherwise you will grip up or lose drift, depending on what kind of tires you got on your car and then a pro intake. So that's what we're rocking for our uh, engine management. We are running zero downforce all the way. Uh, I could probably tune in a little downforce if I want to make the car grip faster in the rear by adding some rear downforce or front downforce if I want it to handle a little bit better. But the E30 handles pretty well out of the box with no, uh, no downforce. So that's why we're rocking no downforce on our body kit. So nitty gritty of suspension. So we are rocking just some uh, import wheels, uh, 35 profile, nine and a half in the front. Um, I found that nine and a half and ten and a half front and rear pretty pretty good. Um, I like nine and a half in the front. I think I'm running tens or ten and a half in the rear. We'll see that. 35 profile just kind of keep. Ooh, got a little shout out to that Yobi in it. Awesome driving. So big shout out to you. Thanks for the comment on the YouTube. Shout out to you right there. Free shout out right there. <laughs> Free shout out. I'm charged for shout outs. So that's what we're running for rims in the front. And then uh, as for our angle kit. We are running 65 degrees of steering lock and um, camber. We're running almost six degrees of camber in the front. Um, more camber does help with uh, transitions and grip. Uh, toe, negative one and a half, and we're running eight degrees of caster. More caster gives the car a better feel, I guess. So this is kind of like the basic setup I run on pretty much all the cars in the front. Um, kind of the same camber and toe and stuff like that. This car doesn't vary in the front from other cars. So, and then for tires, we are running uh, the Nexons, and we're running 24 PSI in the front. Um, I, you want to run a higher PSI in the front than you do in the rear. Um, just for grip aspects and stuff like that, I, the, the rears will change based on driving and temperature and stuff like that. So, the fronts don't heat up as quick. Um, and you want a little extra slide in the front with a little harder tire pressure personally. That's what I like So that's what we're running for tire pressure in the front on our tires and now for Braking pressure we are running 60% uh, braking force so that you can left foot brake and still keep the rear wheel spinning. That's a kind of a basic um, basic tune for any car uh, my Forza drift cars, I keep it 50-50%, but I keep a lower pressure so I can mat the brakes and still have a uh, wheel speed. So for suspension in the front, we are running pro field suspension. We are running a 12K stiffness and uh, spring length of 11. We could drop it down to 10, but I found 11 works good. I wouldn't slam the car all the way down to the ground personally. Um, prevent scraping and bottoming out and losing traction and speed. Um, and the, the stiffness is kind of like you don't want to be super stiff, but you don't want to be super soft So a little bit softer than stiffer, but not in the middle is kind of a, a good mindset. So that's what we're running here So that's for the front and as for the rear We are running only a import diff I should probably upgrade the diff so we're running a 65% diff lock with a 3.8 final drive The final drive is something you need to tweak for the car depending on what gear you want to be in uh, what RPM brand you want to get into, but diff lock you want to have as high as possible, depending on your diff, to get the uh, most lock out of the rear end. And then for our angle kit in the rear, we are running just a little bit of camber and a 1 16th toe. Um, I don't run a lot of camber in the rear. I know a lot, I see a lot of people running massive amounts of camber in the front and the rear. I don't run a lot of camber. Um, I kind of want to keep the tires a little bit flatter. Um, a lot of these, but a little bit of camber makes for the body roll when you're 
leaning on the outer edge tire, you're kind of more of a flat plane. Um, I could probably run a little bit more to help with that, probably grip up a little bit more, but this is kind of like the, the good balance I found for this car. Um, you definitely don't want to run as much camber in the rear as you do in the front. So, I mean, you can if you want to be a stance kid. No offense to stance kids. I was a stance kid for a while. So, in the rear, we're running a 10 inch wide wheel with a 35 uh, profile. Um, that's just a wider, bigger, more grip, wider tire, you know, equals more grip, obviously. And for suspension, we are running our pro suspension. We are running a spring length of 13. We're running a little bit higher um, just because of the um, uh, stiffness of it is a lot softer. So the higher the uh, the suspension so that when it squats down and like when you accelerate, the back end's going to squat. You don't hit the ground as much. If you notice a couple sparks on Cali Banks, that's because it's, well, it's, I could drop it down to that, but we're just going to be scraping everywhere. It looks sweet but it's not. And then that is just a little bit too high and it changes the acrimony of the camber and stuff. So 13 is what I've found works. Um, so we're gonna continue. So that is the, basically the build rundown of the E30, the, the rotary E30. So if you remember the settings that we just did there, if you take a look at say this custom one, we're on 70, eight and a half seven and a half a caster kind of very similar to the front as uh the e30 is like i said that it, that's pretty much kind of a standard um the s14 we're running a lot stiffer in the front um just because of the motor that i have in there the 2j is heavy um so i gotta kind of keep it stiffer because the weight of the engine is was bogging down the front so that's why we're running um a lot, lot stiffer in the front um spring length just like that is personal preference i guess but try and keep it a little bit off the ground <laughs> you don't want to bury yourself into the ground uh brakes are the same way 60 percent braking force in the front which is weird that my custom brakes are the same braking force as the other ones uh tire pressures we're running pretty much the same pressures i didn't think i should i don't think i showed you the rear pressures of the e30 i did forget that so let's go take a look real quick at the rear pressures of the E30. And I said I run lower in the rear, 10 PSI. Um, I believe my uh, S14 is also 10 PSI in the rear. So very similar setup, very similar camber and toe. You notice it's kind of the same. I probably should run a little bit more in the rear of the S14, but I'm not. Um, spring length is higher stiffness is softer in the rear um and that's just for the squat um so if you notice that the uh and then for, we are oh geez what did i do we are running some downforce in the rear um and we're running some really wide track some really wide track in the front and not so much in the rear i think it just totally messed up my tune so we're gonna have to recheck that but that's so that's some tuning tips that i have for you guys here in the game um stiffer in the front softer in the rear make sure it's high enough so it doesn't um bash the ground when it squats as well as you know you definitely want more camera in the front than you do the rear um this car pokes a lot because if you look at like the pro cars kind of set the same way so i kind of based it on what i know from tuning the cars in forza and it kind of uh it kind of worked out in my favor and we got my uh e46 which needs a little love looks like we need to give the e46 a little love here soon uh we do have the mx5 which we haven't really used yet that much that i got to build up we have our s15 and then we have our little uh little s13 girl over here that uh needs to needs to hit the track a little more so with that being said we're gonna hit the track a little bit more before we end this episode off, but I want to give you guys a little tuning tips to show you guys a breakdown of the E30. Uh, maybe that'll help you guys uh, get on the track a little bit. I feel like uh, I feel like I want to run Cali Banks to try and get a good solid look run without smacking the wall. We're gonna bring out the E30 again. So make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter, all of which are found in the description box below. 
big thank you to you guys coming back and uh, understanding about Torch Drift being gone. But Torch Drift is back, if you haven't noticed. Two for this week. So, I promised I'd bring it back, and it's back. And uh, a lot of people have been asking about tuning and tips on tuning their car. Well, here you go. <laughs> Little uh, tuning tips. Tuning tips for myself. So, let's see if we can get a good solid run here on the banks. Definitely going to want to bring some uh, live stream back to the channel. I did have a lot of fun doing live stream. Ooh, feather the gas. I don't want to smack the wall. No smacking the wall. Wall tap is okay. I will take, uh, I'll definitely take that um, wall run. I got a little hesitant. I was worried I was going to, like, smack the inner wall. And I was going to be at too much power. So, if you noticed, like I said, I use handbrake. And when I get off, it's kind of like a clutch kick. No, there it is. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, get wrecked. That would have been so much better with a cleaner lead if I wouldn't have tapped that wall. But I guess 112 is not bad. See what our uh, opponent got. It's a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent bank run, if I do say so myself. So, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for coming back and watching. I appreciate all the support and all the comments. We have uh, gotten over 6,000 subscribers, so welcome to all the new subscribers. And a big thank you for you guys and all the support you guys give me. And uh, we're going to finish this run off. Oh, I just made my car get really squirrely by hitting that handbrake. Initiate in. Oh, too much left foot brake. It was just a quick tap on the brake, but that totally screwed up my line. See, I tried to do a little left for break, even though I should have just hand braked it or felt it off the gas like I normally do. I want to try something different and see how the car reacted, so definitely uh, was not ready for that. Needed to be on turn when that happened, and I was not. So, I think that's going to do it here for this episode here on Torque Drift. If you guys want to keep seeing Torque Drift on the channel, make sure you comment and like this video. I do appreciate all the support. If you're not a subscriber, tap that subscribe button. So, as always, until next time. Like, thank you guys for coming back. I'm Evil Rabbit, and I'll see you guys on the next one.